In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to group things inside UE5. This will allow you to arrange props, place them how you want them, and then group them together. So that way, when you select them, everything is selected, and then you can just easily duplicate and create your environments a lot faster. Instead of having to reselect each object every single time in order to duplicate it for a part of your environment. So let's get into it. So here I have a desk with computer hardware, monitor, tower, and various other props on top of the desk. And all of these were arranged by uh, simply dragging each of these uh, props into the level one by one and then uh, placing everything on top. Now for this uh, style office, you know, I'm going to have a lot of offices here where you are able to kind of walk around and uh, have the same setup in every office. Now I don't want to have to you know, constantly when I have an office, basically I have to redrag a desk, then have to place, you know, phone. And uh, most of these props will work uh, by, you know, just simply dragging them on top and they'll snap. But this t this kind of setup is going to take some time to constantly have to arrange it and redrag it, especially if I have to recreate these cables. So basically, I don't want to have to do this every single time when I have a new office to detail. Now, what of course you could do is once you have uh, one single uh, desk or arrangement of props set up, you simply select everything by holding down control, add to a selection, and then once you have everything selected, you could duplicate it for another part. But then also, this takes a lot of time because I have to select each and every single asset, then make sure I don't miss any of them, and then have to duplicate. This constant selection would also take up a lot of your time. So you want to speed this process up. And the way to do that is to group everything together so it's one single unit. So this way you can just click on the desk or anything that's been grouped together and select the entire group and all the objects in it. So for example, this desk has already been grouped and uh, all I have to do is just left click and it'll select everything that's been grouped into one unit. And now I can just hold Alt and duplicate this somewhere else and this is going to be a lot faster to just detail the environment with rather than having to constantly make those selections. So let me show you how to do this and a few tweaks that you can make with the group by quickly rearranging and repositioning the objects in the group itself. So once you've uh, inserted the props or static meshes into your environment and then you have an arrangement made, go ahead and begin to select everything. So left click will select it, hold control to add to a selection and select everything that you would want to be in the group. Um, let me hit G for uh, game mode or and exit the game mode so I can see the, all the actors. And you don't have, it doesn't have to be props or static meshes, it can be other actors as well, such as these lights. So let's go ahead and also grab some of these lights for the lamp. And actually there's one inside here, just have to find it and select it right there. So there are two lights on here, one point light and one spotlight, making sure that I select them all. And this is why grouping will help because I don't want to have to constantly you know, fly into each prop and having to make sure I selected all the lights. Uh, you know, a lot of these kind of hidden, you know, uh, not very easily visible. Um, I'm also going to select uh, these cables in the back and make sure that I select everything. There's a couple of cables in here that I need to select right in the back and a couple of uh, actors here, making sure that I select. If you want to double check what everything has been selected, um, just make sure once you have the selection made, just move the entire thing. And anything that's left behind has not been added, so I, I missed one cable. Then once you've made a selection, and actually I'm going to deselect one item so I can uh, show you how to add to an existing group. So once you made the selection and you like the arrangement, go ahead and group it by hitting Control G. Or you can right click inside the viewport, go to Group and group it here. So now everything's been grouped. If I deselect it by le uh, left clicking off of it and then I left click again anywhere, um, everything will be selected. And now you can go ahead and duplicate it or move it. Now I left one item out. So let's say I want to add something to an existing group. All I have to do is select the group, hold control and left click on whatever I want to add into that group that's not been added. Then I can just right click, go to groups, and choose add to group. It knows which item have not been added and it gives you an option to do so. So let's go ahead and add to group. So now the PC tower has been added into the group. Now if I right click again, you have a few other options. You can go ahead and ungroup 
or press shift G. This will break the group up and essentially remove the group. So now everything is its own individual item. And I would have to reselect everything and group it again. So let me undo so we got our group back. So let me go ahead and uh, make a duplicate. Hold Alt, left click and drag. So this way we have a copy. Let's just drag it somewhere else. So let's say I have this desk now. Um, and of course, I don't want to have to have the same arrangement on top of this desk as I do everywhere else. You know, you want to vary things up. You may want to add a few things, maybe delete them, maybe just reposition the items. So it's not a constant, just the same duplicate over and over again. Well, you have another option here where you can just unlock, move things around and then lock the group. So if you right click on the group, go to groups, you have unlock option. So let's go ahead and unlock it. So essentially the group will still remain, but we unlock so we can work with individual items within that group. So now I could just take, let's say this cup, move it here. Uh, maybe I just want to remove the lights and have this lamp to be off. Now, if you try to remove or delete anything within the group, it's got a menu will pop up. So let me go ahead and select this light. I'm going to hit delete and it's asking that it's being referenced within the group. Do you want to delete it? And I'm just going to click yes. And let me delete this light as well. So let's say this is going to be uh, this lamp is going to be off. We move the cup and you can just continue modifying whatever you need within this group. And then once you are happy, you modified everything you need, go ahead and right click on any of the items that are part of the group, go to groups and then lock it. And now you have the selection of the entire group back. Now you can also remove parts from the group. So let me go ahead and right click on it again. Let's unlock so we can work with individual items. And now if you want to remove an item from the group, so let's say uh, we want to remove this cup, that's uh, not part, not have it be part of the group. Just right click on select the item and then right click on it and then go to groups and then select remove from group. Then select anything that's within the group and let's lock it back up. So now this desk does not have the cup. So the cup has been removed from that group. And last, you can see that uh, there is a pivot point on within that group and that's how you're going to be dragging it and modifying it. You can temporarily uh, change the pivot point. Uh, you won't be able to save the pivot point, but you can uh, temporarily change it. So you can uh, you know, have maybe rotation or movement or scale or of the group and all the grouped objects be at a different point. So if you don't like this pivot point, uh, let me actually move this out into the empty world and uh, so it's empty area. And what you can do is just right click anywhere on your mesh, go to pivot, and then you can choose any of these options. You can center and selection. You can right click again. You, know, you have a uh, set pivot as offset here. So the pivot will snap and then you can go ahead and maybe rotate from here, scale or whatever else. However, just to know like when I deselect it and then reselect that again, that pivot point will be back to where it was originally. So you're not going to be able to save that pivot point, but you can move it temporarily and do something with it. Now, if I want to go ahead and delete everything here, the entire group, I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit delete. Uh, whenever this menu pops up, you can see that I can go ahead and click yes. And basically it's asking, uh, this is a reference to a list of objects and it's uh, saying it's going to delete everything from here. If I click yes, it's going to keep asking me every time because it's uh, asking for each individual static mesh. So what you can do to kind of speed this process up and not having to click yes a bunch of times, just apply to all and hit yes. And then the entire group and all the objects have been deleted. Another useful part of grouping is being able to group similar items together so you can change properties or swap out static meshes or swap out or change materials a lot quicker. That's allowing you to prototype with greater speed. So for example, if you group a bunch of same lights together, such as I have a bunch of rectangular lights here at the top, and I don't want to have to constantly select them in order to change their intensity or light color. Essentially, you can just select all the lights, group them, and then when you select one, everything is selected and you're able to change the light color or intensity all at the same time for every single light, such as let's put intensity to five or to one much quicker than me having to constantly select them. And when it comes to static meshes, I would do group the floor. So what I could do is I could swap out the floor material and material instance to something else. So instead of me having to constantly select them all, you know, let's say I just want uh, to see a, a different type of material on top of this. So I selected them all, I already grouped them, and I just need to swap out to a different material. So let me quickly open up material instances and look for a different type of floor. So let's say I want to have this carpet. And this way you can just quickly prototype 
different types of looks without having to select all the static meshes. Uh, you can also swap out the static meshes, not just material instances or materials on those static meshes. So I have a bunch of walls back here already grouped. So I would just go to static meshes and uh, let's, uh, let's try out a, a window. So what I would do, since uh, everything is grouped, I would just left click hold and drag onto the static mesh property and everything would get swapped to that static mesh. So you can see this can save you a lot of time, especially when you just need to quickly create or experiment and prototype your environment. Now, all these props and all these assets are part of UE5 Retro Office Project tutorial course. It's an extensive tutorial course where you learn how to create and light beautiful interior environments using the provided props. So the tutorial course includes 19 videos. It's nine hours long, goes into depth about creating retro style office environment in UE5 and you get 79 static meshes with the course so you can create with as you follow the tutorials. The course is now available and you can pick it up, watch, learn and use the retro office assets to create with.